Growing up, kids are told to sit down at the table when they're eating. Far from just being about good manners, science is now discovering how standing up while eating can change taste perception, temperature sensation, and even how much is consumed. Welcome to the weird world of altered taste perceptions, which is what I'll be exploring in today's podcast. Welcome to the Thinking Nutrition Podcast. My name is Tim Crow, and I'm a career researcher, educator, and science communicator with most of this spend in the field of nutrition. And while I don't profess to have all the answers in an area that is continually changing as research changes, you can count on what is covered in this podcast to be based on the whole field of nutrition science, not just selective areas that support a particular way of thinking. And this podcast will always be free from any commercial product tie-ins, endorsements, or advertisements. Just credible nutrition science presented in plain and simple language, and then translating this into what it means for your health. So, on with today's show. Taste is one of the five key senses. It happens when a substance in the mouth reacts chemically with the taste receptor cells found on taste buds mostly on the tongue. Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami are the five well-characterized tastes, but there is growing evidence that we may even have a sixth taste, and that's for fat. Taste, though, is more than these defined tastes, as you also have to factor in smell, texture, and temperature, because all of that combined is what gives us our perception of taste and flavor of food. Just one example of how they are all related is if the sense of smell is impaired by a stuffy blocked nose, for instance, then the perception of taste is usually dulled as well. Now this podcast though is not going to be a masterclass on taste physiology. Instead, I want to delve into another aspect of physiology that can affect taste, and that's the vestibular system. The vestibular system is the sensory apparatus in your inner ear that helps the body maintain its postural equilibrium and gives us our sense of balance. The vestibular system is often referred to as the sixth sensory system. And anyone with a vestibular system out of whack can experience dizziness, vertigo and imbalance. So what sort of effect could the vestibular system play in influencing eating sensations? This is more than an academic question, as there is a growing trend for more and more food to be eaten on the go. That means fewer traditional meals eaten at a table and more eaten while moving from place to place or even getting a quick meal standing up before moving on to the next pressing engagement of the day. Scientists are now questioning if there could be something inherently different about standing up compared to sitting down that can affect taste perception and consumption of food. The theory is that when people experience some form of stress or discomfort, food does not taste as good. Standing up is thought to cause a mild stress to the body. So how much could this stress influence the experience of eating? Over a series of six different experiments involving several hundred volunteers, researchers explored standing versus sitting on food taste and enjoyment, as well as temperature perception and the volume of food consumed. And I'll link to this study in the show notes. And here's a summary of all of those studies. People sitting down rated delicious tasting food, such as freshly baked brownies, more highly compared to when the same food was eaten standing up. When the same food was made less delicious by adding in too much salt to the recipe, people sitting down rated the food poorly, which wasn't so surprising. What was surprising though, was that those people standing up did not notice the difference of the extra saltiness in the brownies. So maybe for parents struggling with fussy eaters, Maybe, just maybe, it could even be worth trying to get kids to eat more unpleasant, healthy foods, and I'm looking at you, bit of broccoli, by having them eating standing up. Worth at least an at-home experiment. And it wasn't just taste perception 
that was affected by standing versus sitting. Temperature perception of hot beverages such as coffee was rated stronger and more intense when sitting compared to standing up. And then there was the effect of how much of it was drunk. Drinking coffee while standing led to less of it being drunk. And just to raise the stakes for how a mild stress can alter the eating experience, volunteers also sampled fruit snacks while carrying a shopping bag. The stress of carrying the extra weight meant that both people sitting and standing rated the snack to be less tasty. Whether it's standing or engaging in some form of extra exertion, such as carrying a heavy bag, the low-level stress placed on the body is enough to mute taste buds and affect appetite. This makes sense from a physiological point of view, as when the body is under some form of stress, we are primed to be in a more fight or flight direction, rather than in the opposite rest and digest direction. So let's wrap all this up, and how to make practical use of all of this research. Take the time to appreciate eating for the experience that it is. That means not just savouring food, but also being in the right physical space. And that means sitting down and giving your full attention to the food at hand, rather than slurping and munching on the go. So that's it for today's show. You can find the show notes either in the app you're listening to this podcast on, if it supports it, or else head over to my webpage at thinkingnutrition.com.au and click on the podcast section to find this episode to read the show notes. If you find this podcast of value, then please consider sharing it with your friends and colleagues, or maybe even leave a review. This all helps increase the ranking and reach of the podcast, which means a big win for credible, evidence-based nutrition messages while helping to dilute out the crazy and making the world a slightly less confusing place. I'm Tim Crow, and you've been listening to Thinking Nutrition. Thinking Nutrition.